My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. What do you think, guys? Actually, girls, huh? Two girls. You guys are warm. You're keeping me warm. Your little hearts are going about a thousand miles an hour. There's a lot of reminders when you're on a farm, even a small one like ours, of living and dying. And every spring, these baby goats are a good reminder of the starting out of life. They're so fun and so friendly and they bounce all over the place and this is Adrian who's named because she was a fighter she had to really fight to get out and she's named after the Rocky movie so welcome to the world Adrian we lost somebody though this week a true river rat on the St. Lawrence River um, 79 years he spent on the St. Lawrence River his name was Louis J. Benton II and he was a good friend of mine and he was a supporter of all the things that I do in the studio and everything else and I was really hoping to give him a ride in this Chris Craft this year but he's gonna have to look down on us when we're taking that first ride and I'm sure he will be because we'll be driving right past his island I also his son Jay brought me a few of his tools uh, yesterday and we were talking about his dad and um, some of those tools are going to go right in the mix here at the Wooden Boat Experience. I'm looking forward to using them. Um, a couple of housekeeping things from this week. Somebody sent me a message, I think it was on Facebook, about a project. And that message seems to have disappeared. So if you sent me a message and you haven't heard back from me, send that message out again. And if you're going to send me a message in the future, anybody out there in the Wooden Boat Experience land, Use my email, and if you look below the video, you'll see, uh, I think it says show me more or something, or see more. If you click on that in the description, I'll have my email in there all the time so you can get hold of me. I check my email constantly, but something about Facebook, maybe it's because I have a few different pages, things just seem to get lost. And uh, anybody that sent uh, envelopes in, I did get one from Timothy, and Timothy, your sticker is on the way to Port Townsend. I love Port Townsend. I can't wait to visit there again. So, uh, anybody else? We haven't got the mail today yet, but maybe they're on their way. So we're going to get back to work here at the Wooden Boat Experience. It's Thursday morning, and we've got to do the editing tonight. But we're going to do a little bit more work this morning. Speckles, you ready to work? Or are you just going to sit there and lay down all day? We'll be hanging out under the boat today, buddy. Okay, well, I'm going to put Adrian back, and then I'm going to get to it. Well, I just got a book in from Amazon. It's always nice to get a book about boating. And this is the book, Pete Colors Boats, written by John Burke. So there's two projects that I'm considering right now. One is this fantail 24 and a half foot uh, displacement boat that I would put electric power in. And I've seen a couple versions of this, which are really nice, that um, I found on the internet. One was built out west and one was built in Florida. The other boat I'm thinking about doing is this project, which is a 15 and a half foot combination rowing and sailing skiff. And this boat that you're seeing in the book here was built at the Antique Boat Museum quite a while ago, probably about 20 years ago, I think. And that boat is still there. It's called the Margaret. And I went down yesterday and took some measurements off of it to see how much white oak would I need and how many strakes are there and how wide are they because I've got a guy that's sawn up some wood for me and he's got some 16 foot logs that he thinks are pretty clear. And we're gonna see in the next couple of days if he's got some clear stuff that would work for these strakes. So these are two projects that I'm thinking about. And just to let you guys know what my thoughts are currently and who knows, maybe neither of these boats will get built, but these are two projects that I'm considering right now. A wire brush is great for cleaning up parts, but use caution. They will catch an edge just when you get comfortable. And if the brush hits you, it won't improve your looks.
Sometimes it's just better and safer to use a hand wire brush. Okay, so here on the keel, I took out, you can see it's kind of scarfed here, but then this is flat, about 24 inches, and it's about five and a half inches wide. So I've got a, one of these pieces that came from the attic of my hay guy, and it's got a couple of holes here, and it's pretty thin already, and it has a very similar grain structure, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna use a piece of this. I mean, sometimes I hate to cut up something that's this long. If it didn't have these holes, I probably wouldn't use it. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, cut this for length, then for width, and then I'll shape this end. And I'm just trying to get a bunch of stuff ready for when it gets a little warmer, because it's too cold at night right now. We have kind of a cold spell. But I want to epoxy a bunch of things. I want to fix this hole. I want to put this in. The sides of the boat um, on the side near the transom needs to be done. That piece needs to be scarfed in the front. There's just a whole bunch of things that need to be epoxied. It'd be nice to do them all at the same time and um, make sure that we've got 24 hours when it can cure. So we need to see how much more we've got to take off here. Quite a bit still. Go make some more passes over at the uh, planer. So the planer doesn't want to go down as thin as I want it. So we're going to kind of trick it here. make it think the board is actually thicker than it is by using another one. Now we're good. If you can believe it, it's actually snowing outside today. I was mowing the lawn yesterday and it started snowing while I was on the lawnmower. I've just about had enough. Okay, we're gonna create a scarf for this right here. Sharpened the blade up again the other day. Getting a tiny bit of tear out in the edges, but I made it a little wide. Hand working this seems tedious, but although we're gluing with epoxy, which can fill gaps, I want it to fit properly. Now that's pretty good right there. Once I glue this up, I'll be able to take the hand plane and take this outside edge off, get rid of that tear out. We have a nice surface on which to put. So that'll mount nicely on there. And then this part right here will go through there when I drill the new hole in that last little bit. Actually, this comes from underneath, gets bolted through here.
Might need to take the nut off. It's always hard for me because I know there's people watching this channel that know more than me. And I know there's people watching this channel that know less than me. So sometimes I'm sure I do things that some of you watch and, they, and you say to yourself, oh my goodness, everybody knows that, Scott. Well, at some point, all of us know nothing. So lots of times I need to assume on certain little things that people may not have seen this before. So here we have one of the bolts that's holding the gripe to the keel. And I marked it with a Sharpie when it was inside. The extra length that was on there, it's a lot easier to cut it here put it back in and not have to deal with it later. So I'm gonna do that. But one, the little tip is always put the nut on before you cut it. Go ahead and cut it. And I still haven't bought that good hacksaw that somebody suggested. Silicone bronze comes apart pretty easily with a hacksaw. And now, grab a file. Kind of round this top off, sort of make the end of it look like the top of the carriage bolt, like it's been peened over. And then, Take the nut off and it'll clean up that last little bit of thread. And when you go to put it back on, it works really easy. If you don't have a nut on here and you do this, a lot of times when you go to put it back on, you gotta do a lot of messing around. So that's a tip of the day. I go to do the second bolt right after telling you guys about the nut and I forget to put the nut on. Ah, I got it started. I got lucky on that one. So it's close up here and we're good front to back. So now we'll go inside and see just how close we are in there before we push this up because it's a little hard on the plywood going back and forth on this. So I don't want to push it back up through here. And it, essentially this acts like a barb. So when it comes up, it catches and these things go underneath into the rabbit and that's going to cause a problem getting it back out. So we're gonna go underneath. I'm just trying to eyeball it. I'm glad I went through this process of dry fitting because um, there, was, there was definitely an issue up here in this area where this tightens up, where those pieces that I added on, there's no way they were gonna fit until I did the second round of planing them off. So we'll go underneath and take a look again. Okay, we've got some temporary bracing. These will not be in here. Don't worry, when I'm done, that would be pretty bad. So you can see, that the gap is pretty even. But way up front, you can see where I tapered them down because they were touching already in this position before. But that's a fairly even gap down through there. And over here, it's a fairly even gap there too. I think we are ready to put this in. Of course, you know, once you put the 5200 on, there's no going back. And this is why you dry fit. So. I had gone through, as I explained to you, and thought everything was okay, until I realized that right here, the keel is very thin here, and this garbert is screwing through into the keel, and then it has to go into something behind the keel, which means I needed to add this, and this on this side. But now, it looks like our gap is pretty good. Now it's closer in the back because the back is up tight. The front is not because it hasn't pushed up through yet. So I think that is a successful dry fit and it's a little too late to tackle putting this in right now. It is a major undertaking to get right and you don't want to do it when you're tired. So we will glue 
these pieces on, these four pieces on to this piece tonight, and it'll be ready for tomorrow. I don't see anything that's got to be adjusted. Anything that would have to be adjusted would be done with a hand plane anyway. These four pieces, two on this side, two in the back, are going to now become a permanent part of this main piece. Okay, got a little bit more 5200 than I wanted in places, but that's good squeeze out. Hopefully it'll be cured enough to put in tomorrow. If not, we'll put it in the next day. That should solve all our problems. This should get into better parts of the plywood where it's not ratty at the edges. Be able to tie it right into there. I cut a piece of this is um, marine plywood it's got uh, five plies and um, it's, it's good stuff about three-eighths of an inch thick this is gonna go on the inside of this hole so we're gonna epoxy this from up underneath we're gonna use these screws to go down through these three holes that are already there to pull this up so we'll have epoxy then we'll have mechanical fastening but what I don't want is this hole left so we found a hole saw that's the right size. The piece that comes out of here will be the right size, but we don't want a hole in the middle of it. So we're gonna take the centering bit out. Now using a hole saw like this without the centering bit, if you're doing it with a, um, a regular drill, it's not gonna work very well. But in the drill press, and if you actually clamp down the piece of plywood or whatever you're gonna cut this plug out of, it will work. So, but. I wouldn't recommend doing it with your regular drill. And there we have it. So here's our little piece we just cut out. Just sanding the rough edges off of it. Just about perfect. I am going to clean this up a little bit. There seems to be some 5200 or something in there. Okay, this plug is going to fit in there. I don't dare push it in. I might not be able to get it back out. This is going underneath. Those two pieces are ready. This piece here is ready. So we'll be able to epoxy that on. I like to do the epoxy a uh, bunch of things in a, at the same time because the tips that um, on the uh, Thixaflex are uh, sacrificial so you can only use them once so we'll uh, epoxy this this and some stuff we want to do up front don't get to use the number six countersink very much pretty small screws and we're just dry fitting this right now so I don't have to do any of this when there's epoxy on it Dry fitting seems like it takes a lot of extra time, but in the long run, it really saves a lot of time. So this little three by three inch piece of plywood, I pushed up underneath. Well, it would be down if the hull was the other way, but I pushed it up. I took a long board and put it up against it, and then I ran a wedge in, in between the two to kind of hold it in place. Now I'm gonna put the screws in. Once the screws are in, they'll act like the clamps and I can take that wedge out of there so it doesn't end up epoxy to the piece. This would be a lot more mess uh, messy and difficult if I hadn't pre-fit and drilled all these and countersunk these screws. Now it just goes in nice and easy. You don't want that piece falling on the ground, especially in all these wood shavings with the epoxy on it. That's a real mess. Okay, we probably got enough epoxy in there. Spread it around a little bit. First, we'll put a nice coat of epoxy on here and then we'll spread it out with the 
Bondo spreader. Epoxy will fill gaps, but I would rather there wasn't any. Now before I go too far down to here, let's see if I'm putting the right amount on or too much or too little. We want this fully bedded and we want it to squeeze out when it gets tightened down. We don't want water to be able to get in between these two things. One thing you have to be careful of with this, um, these mixing tubes is this doesn't go all the way to the bottom like normal. So when you think you still got some left in this tube, you're actually can be very close to the end. So be careful of that. You don't want to run out in the middle of a job. I like to have at least one extra tube around just in case. I just realized there's three screw holes here. I want to put screws back in, but I never marked down where they are. So I'll make a little guide over here. Alright, that ought to do it. Okay, might as well clean this off on here. We're going to put a thin coat on this as well. Very thin though. Pay attention mostly to the outside edges and the most likely place where we're going to have a gap and a problem is here at this scarf. So we'll give it just a little bit extra here. Always leave this tip where if it drips it doesn't matter. It wasn't a problem a month ago but now that it's getting warm in here the epoxy is a lot looser than it was. line this up with that line in the front. We've got extra width in the front because this keel is tapered, but in the back it's very close. So these are brass nails. Which I'm going to use this clamp. We've got it so the fit up is pretty good now. And now I've just got to figure out how I'm going to clamp this. And then we'll put this piece on. Sometimes you have to be creative with a boat to get things clamped because if I tried to squeeze it this way because the boat comes like this, the clamp just slips off. So a screw here, a little bit there, and now we've got to wedge this in a little. Hopefully I can get that in a little farther. If not, we'll deal with it afterwards. Okay, it's clamped in place. There's a little bit of epoxy on this piece that I'm using as a clamp. Hopefully we'll be able to get that off if it cures. Got this little squeeze thing holding just this corner in but I think that's gonna be good. All right, that one's done. So just so you understand, when you use this, I'll show you what it looks like, this Thixo Flex, I just ran out just now, and there's still this much of the um, gun sticking out. So don't be surprised when that happens to you. See, I'm squeezing, nothing's coming out now. Because of the way this whole thing works, they can't, they can't use the whole tube like a regular cock tube. So bear that in mind. You don't end up here and be surprised. I finished the day off Wednesday by scraping, sanding, and painting the gas tank base and straps. I had a few extra minutes, and it got one more job out of the way. I really like that Total Boat bilge paint. I like the way it flows when you brush it on, you just have to be careful because it does dry pretty quick in the brush. Well, it's Thursday morning, the next morning. 
and let's take this apart and see how we did. Release this pressure. Ah, well, I guess these things don't stick to epoxy. That's good. This piece of wood, on the other hand, probably is stuck. Probably not too bad. I don't think there's too much on it. Yeah, awesome. It actually made a pretty good clamp. All right, I'm gonna put the hand plane on there and see what it looks like. This is an interesting time lapse. If you watch carefully, as each step of the process happens, you can actually see the bow tightening up. Well, we're about to use some 5200 to glue this bow together, or as Dan Payne calls it on Facebook, the devil's toothpaste. While I'm working on the dark side of the boat, I'm gonna tell you about something new. Dan Miller, a boat builder and restorer, is a real boat guy. Hopefully we'll visit his boat shop someday. Through his Gato Diablo coffee, you now have a new way to support the WBE and enjoy each day. Go to GatoDiablo.coffee and order some WBE Honduras Mahogany Roasted Coffee. And now the lit up side of the boat, where we can actually see what's happening. We'll see you next week with another episode of the Wooden Boat Experience.